previously on Robot Cantina. Zero to 30 miles an hour in 25 <laughs> seconds. Damn, mopeds go faster than that. Cut. In this episode, we'll take the 212cc engine to the next level with a stage one upgrade. Stay tuned as we build a more powerful engine for our street legal go-kart. <laughs> These are basically all the parts you'd expect to see in a stage 1 upgrade kit, with the exception of the carburetor. We're going to be using this carburetor because it has an idle mixture screw, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's first take a look at the spark plug. So the part number is AR3910X. The X at the end is important. If you order the plug without an X, you'll more or less be getting a standard spark plug. A lot of people like to use these, and I do as well. It's a pretty cool plug and it actually delivers, and it's not just a gimmick. Up next is the air filter adapter, also known as a velocity stack. Now this is kind of a basic no frills part, and they do make a better looking one, but at stage one levels, the engine just isn't gonna flow enough air for the velocity stack to make a difference. The exhaust header is also a basic no frills item. This header has a round port, and if we compare it to a slightly better pipe, we can see it has a D-shaped port. Now the D-shaped port's more ideal for this engine, but I wanna see if it really matters. So ignition timing is done with this offset flywheel key. Now this thing's pretty much a compromise and not a perfect solution. If we look at this graph, we can see the ideal ignition timing is on a slope, or in other words, the ignition timing is constantly changing depending on the RPM and other factors. The stock ignition timing on a Predator engine looks like this. It's just a flat line. When you install an offset key, the timing is still a flat line, but it's just slightly offset. Now let's go back to the chart showing the ideal ignition curve. This curve is more or less ideal for something like a mini bike or a go-kart, basically something that doesn't have a huge load on the engine. Our project car is effectively a 1300 pound go-kart and is going to put a huge load on the engine. So we're going to start with a 4 degree offset key and then do some experimentation once the engine's in the car. This should be pretty interesting. This slug of brass is an oversized carburetor jet, and it's actually the most important part of a stage 1 upgrade. These jets come in various sizes ranging from 32 to 38, and for most applications size 36 is ideal, so let's start with that one. Over in Canada, they use a 19 millimeter socket to pull the flywheel nut. But here in the States, you can use three quarter inch. It's the same thing. Go ahead and put the nut back on and spin it till it's the same level as the tip of the crankshaft. There should be about a seven millimeter or quarter inch clearance between the nut and the flywheel. Grab a big screwdriver and hammer. Now I always like to use a brass hammer for jobs like this because the soft hammer head will not damage the nut or the crankshaft. Place the screwdriver behind the flywheel and then pull it towards yourself. Next bash the nut with a hammer and then the flywheel should pop off. This takes some practice but once you do it a million times it's pretty easy stuff. There is no easy way to get the flywheel key out of the crankshaft and sometimes it just takes brute force. Okay, now we can install the four degree offset flywheel key, but like I said earlier, 
We might change this depending on how the car runs. Ignition timing is real tricky. Now take a close look. The arrow points to the front of the engine. Now I consider the front of the engine to be where the cylinder head is located. The offset key should look like this. Now if you put it in backwards, the engine will run poorly if it even runs at all. The flywheel on these engines is probably something you should consider upgrading to a billet unit. These original cast iron flywheels have been known to explode when the governor is disabled. Or in other words, disabling the governor is about the same as pulling a pin on a grenade. Something to keep in mind. The cooling fan and starter cup only fit one way, so pay attention during reassembly. The air filter and velocity stack kit that I got requires changing out this stud. Now here's a real cool trick on taking the stud out. And you can use the same trick to put the stud back in. Before we put the carburetor on the engine, the main jet needs to be changed. In order to do that, we need to pull the carburetor bowl. The jet's located right here in the center of the carburetor. To pull the old jet, you're gonna to wanna to use a good quality screwdriver with a hardened tip. Give it a firm twist. If you don't have a good tip on the screwdriver, you risk damaging the jet and making it impossible to remove. This is the E-tube and sometimes this gets replaced, but today we'll just put it back in the carburetor. This of course is the new jet and we'll put that in the carburetor. Oh, if you're keeping track, this is a size 36 jet. Now this is a new carburetor, so all the O-rings are in perfect condition. But sometimes on older carburetors, you have to replace the O-rings. This carburetor gasket can go on four different ways, but only one way is the correct way, so keep that in mind. Installing the header is pretty easy. All you need is a 13 millimeter wrench. These short pipe headers ensure maximum exhaust flow to help boost power, but they're very loud. At some point you might actually be tempted to put the old muffler back on, but nah. You can, but keep in mind you'll lose power and you'll need to put a smaller jet in a carburetor. Putting the muffler back on without changing the jet will cause the engine to run really rich. 
Basically, the carburetor jet balances the intake system with the exhaust system. Once you stray off the path of a true stage one upgrade, it'll take some experimentation to put the engine back in tune. The OEM spark plug requires a 13 16 socket to remove, and then you'll need a 5 8 socket to install the high performance plug. This old plug actually looks pretty good. <laughs> of course the camera won't focus, but trust me, this is the new plug. Well that's about it for the upgrade, but stay tuned, we're going to dyno test this engine in a moment. Anyway, the offset flywheel key is probably the hardest part to install, but overall this upgrade's fairly easy. We covered pretty much a lot of stuff so far. Now as you recall, I also replaced the carburetor with a generic aftermarket unit. The replacement carburetor has an idle mixture screw, which is a really nice feature to help get the engine to idle smoothly. It's not really necessary, but it's a nice touch. Hey, sorry about that. This will only take a few seconds. This video series was filmed during the worldwide pandemic of 2020. Unfortunately, these 212cc engines are temporarily out of stock everywhere. Now, blowing up one of these engines on a dyno would make great video, but it would seriously affect the production of future videos. We did a few dyno runs on this Stage 1 engine without a governor, and it really screams. As a matter of fact, it's borderline dangerous. In the interest of moving forward in this video series, we decided to run the engine with a modified governor. The governor is adjusted to keep the engine RPM inside the power band. Or in other words, we capped the RPM just above the point where the engine makes maximum horsepower. The good news is the modified governor doesn't affect the results and you can look forward to future videos where we modify the engine with a billet rod, a billet flywheel, and stiffer valve springs. And while we're in there, why not throw in a camshaft? These billet parts will actually decrease the risk of the engine exploding on the dyno. Now would be a good time to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell because you don't want to miss any of this. Now let's get back to the dyno video. Okay, let's talk about the results. First of all, this engine was tested well over 10 times, but you only get to see one dyno run. Trust me, one is enough for video purposes. Over here, we can see how dramatically the governor limits the engine RPM. Without the governor, the RPMs will peak around 6200 before the valves start floating. Now, believe it or not, some people rely on valve float to limit engine speed. Sort of a half-assed governor. Hey, it works, but it's not something I would encourage. The sweet spot for horsepower spans between 4,000 and 4,200 RPM, then it starts to fall off. The average horsepower we collected throughout the dyno session was 9.33 at 4,200 RPM, and this is of course SAE corrected horsepower. The Stage 1 package appears to yield about a 40% increase in power, which is not too shabby. At the Stage 1 level, the type of velocity stack and exhaust header doesn't seem to make a difference. However, down the road when we put a cam in the engine, we'll try it again. Clearly, this engine likes to make torque on the low end. Peak torque occurs between 2500 and 2600 RPM. We're showing an impressive 14 and a half pounds of torque on this chart. I'm hoping with a future camshaft change, we can broaden the torque band significantly, if that's even possible. In case you didn't already know this, torque is what moves a heavy car. Although this Honda is extremely lightweight for an automobile, it's very heavy for a go-kart. Join us next time on Robot Cantina. Hey Chuck, no. count to five and then go.
Hey, if you're still watching, you must have enjoyed the video. Do me a favor and click on the like button. And while you're at it, click on subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop a note in the comment section. Thanks for watching.